And welcome to Hannity. And tonight, mob rule, left wing intimidation, harassment is once again fashionable inside the modern extreme Democratic Socialist Party. After first ignoring and excusing, and in some cases even openly being supportive of the 574 violent riots in the summer of 2020, dozens dead, thousands of cops injured. Billions in property damage, people like Kamala Harris promoting a bail fund in Minnesota, praising the LAPD and the defunding efforts there. And then, of course, hypocritically spending every waking moment of every day obsessively condemning the riot on January 6th. And, of course, ignoring the core issue of why Nancy Pelosi and Mayor Muriel Bowser failed to make use of the up to 20,000 National Guard troops that Donald Trump had authorized, as required by law, two days prior to keep the peace, as also requested by the Capitol Police chief repeatedly. Democrats are now reversing course once again, and they are supporting acts of political violence. As we speak, far-left agitators, they're trying to harass, intimidate U.S. Supreme Court justices and coerce them into saving Roe v. Wade. It is a disgusting, repulsive, despicable attempt to destroy the independence of our nation's judiciary. And the silence and the tacit approval from the Biden administration and Joe Biden and Democrats, frankly, that's equally repulsive. This week, Justice Alito and his family, they were forced to flee their home after rioters published Alito's address and then made plans to show up at his front door. By the way, they showed up. Coming up, our own Sarah Carter will join us live from the scene of a so-called demonstration that just took place outside of Alito's home. But sadly, it's not just Justice Alito. Over the weekend, multiple Supreme Court justices and their families were targeted at their own homes by pro-abortion activists. Let me be clear. This is never okay. All of our public officials, both sides of the aisle, must be safe, must be protected from political violence and intimidation because it's never acceptable. On this show, we condemn all of the rioting, all 574 riots in the summer of 2020. We condemned violence on January the 6th. Uh, I did it in real time on my own radio show and that night on this show. And now we condemn the less violence against the Supreme Court and pro-life Americans everywhere. Over the weekend in Wisconsin, the headquarters of a pro-life group was attacked. A Molotov cocktail was thrown through a window into an office, causing considerable damage. And look at your screen. This threatening message was spray painted on the building, quote, if abortions aren't safe, then you aren't either. A church in Colorado also defaced by pro-abortion vandals. And in New York, St. Patrick's Cathedral was surrounded by protesters hurling insults at anyone who went inside. And in Los Angeles, rioters dressed as handmaids stormed into a Catholic church service shouting profanities and pro-abortion rhetoric. And in Washington, D.C., two Catholic churches on Capitol Hill requested extra police presence after one left-wing group threatened to, quote, burn the Eucharist. Now, naturally, many Democrats, their friends, the media mob, they're applauding this kind of violence. I guess they only are con condemn violence if they can tie it somehow to something Republican or conservative. In a statement, the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, applauded these so-called protesters for using their righteous anger to march and to mobilize in front of justices' houses. And get this, one reporter explicitly called for more violence, tweeting a link to the Wisconsin attack along with the caption, quote, more of this, may these people never know a moment of peace or safety until they rot in the ground. And meanwhile, a wannabe politician in California called for Kavanaugh's home and all of his possessions that they be burned in front of him. The rhetoric on TV was even worse. Take a look. Violence is always over the line. But there are real questions and conversations today about protests outside Supreme Court justices' houses, particularly Justice Kavanaugh. Um, where do you think that line is? I think for a lot of people, the, a conversation about civility feels... Um, like it misses the mark mm. when constitutional rights that you believe that you had for over 50 years are about to be overturned. I mean, I suppose if the justices don't like the First Amendment, they could just drive to another state where the legislature has determined that the constitutional right to privacy applies, right? 
I mean, that is what they're telling women to do if they want to control their own bodies, right? All of these things that we, you know, say might happen if abortion gets banned, if abortion becomes illegal, they do happen. This isn't a theory. We don't need to speculate. We have actual facts that can inform what happens. If Roe's overturned, abortion's not getting banned, and it's not going to be illegal. That is a big lie. We'll get to that in a second. Now, believe it or not, it actually gets worse. One deranged person over at MSDNC saying she'd like to make love to the Supreme Court leaker and then joyfully abort the fetus. We'll play that disturbing clip coming up. But maybe worst, worst of all, for more than a week, the White House completely, utterly refused to condemn what is the stalking and the outright intimidation and doxing of Supreme Court justices. Listen to Jen Psaki repeatedly excusing and supporting the protests at the homes of Supreme Court justices where they have children and they have friends and loved ones and neighbors. Really? You support this, Joe? Take a look. Do you think the progressive activists that are now planning protests outside some of the justices' houses are extreme? Peaceful protest? No. Peaceful protest is but not extreme. Some of these justices have young kids, but their neighbors are not all public figures. So but would the president think about waving off yeah. activists that want to go into residential neighborhoods in Virginia and Maryland? Uh, Peter, look, I think our view here is that peaceful protest, there's a long history in the United States and the country of that. So he doesn't care if they're protesting outside the Supreme Court or outside someone's private residence. I, I don't have an official U.S. government position on where people protest. Uh, imagine if conservatives started giving out the addresses of prominent liberal Democrats and, and saying, go protest in front of their house, do it peacefully. That'd be okay? After a weekend of violence, Saki was forced to issue this tepid statement. The president strongly believes in the constitutional right to protest, but that should never include violence, threats, or vandalism. Judges perform an incredibly important function in our society, and they must be able to do their jobs without concern for their personal safety. So why don't you tell your supporters, Joe, to stay away from their private homes? And Jen, what about the so-called protesters stalking now Supreme Court justices at home? Care to say anything about that? Apparently not. Take a look. You decide. You suggested that uh, peacefully protesting outside the homes of, of judges and, and Supreme Court justices uh, is, is part of the freedom of expression and, and part of what we do in the United States. But there's a, there's a law in Virginia that actually prohibits um, uh, protest outside private residence, even when it's done peacefully. Um, so I'm wondering if uh, any sort of uh, demonstrations outside private homes might run fall of that law and, and other laws like it in other parts of the country. We're certainly not suggesting anyone break any laws. I would note that the president's view has long been, and I tweeted this earlier this morning and repeated and made a number of these comments last week as well, that uh, violence, threats, and, and intimidation have no place in political discourse. And I'm sure if something happened, you'd probably call it an insurrection, right, Jen? Do you really think, uh, do you really care that Supreme Court justices are getting stalked, harassed, intimidated this way? Do you think that you care about churches being vandalized as we witnessed this weekend? Imagine if we flip the script. Imagine if conservatives were stalking, harassing liberal Supreme Court justices, which they never should do. Could you imagine the outrage? Imagine the hysteria. The hypocrisy is off the charts here. And of course, Democrats, they're all hypocrites because they have almost no principles. They were virtually silent with 574 riots in the summer of 2020, but they do want to talk about the one riot because they can use it for political purposes. And think about this. For several years, Democrats tried to weaponize your government and force all Americans to get vaccinated, then boosted, then boosted again, even though we had breakthrough cases. Millions of Americans lost their jobs because of that mandate. Millions more were turned away from restaurants and stores and shut out. My body, my choice didn't seem to exist to the left when it came to vaccines. That same principle, well, are we not going to apply that to abortion? Still, at the end of the day, abortion will be legal across the country. All the hysteria, all the hyperbole is false, even if Roe v. Wade is overturned. So the idea that Roe, if, if Roe is overturned, that it will somehow end abortion in America is now the big Democratic lie. Democrats need a good distraction for the midterms, a way to drive out turnout and excite their base, and their radical base is lapping it up 
and I fear this can go bad, from bad to worse. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.